If you could get an Arai helmet online for 50 euros, would you buy it and then go out riding with it? Or would you think twice and realise that it's not possible to get a handmade Japanese motorcycle helmet for anywhere near this price? Well, I'm putting it to the test so that you don't have to. And remember, do not try this at, at home. I've heard a lot of people talking about ordering cheap motorcycle gear from websites like Wish and Alibaba, but isn't that a little dodgy? I logged on to Wish.com and typed in motorcycle helmets and then hit enter. I'd never done this before and I was actually quite shocked to see a massive collection of helmets that are supposed to resemble popular models by respectable helmet manufacturers such as Shoei, Arai and AGV. Needless to say, I immediately ordered five different helmets, and as you will see later on, we get them crash tested at Arai's test centre in the Netherlands. Of these five helmets, only two ended up actually arriving, and it took nearly two months for us to receive them. So now I had an AGV Pista-like helmet and an Arai SZ Ram-like helmet. If the questionable price or amateuristic photos weren't already giving you enough warning signs, then maybe the fact that both helmets were delivered in bin bags would. The shipping label of the so-called Arai helmet stated that the value was only $6.18, so I think it's safe to say that this one probably wasn't handmade in Japan. You don't have to be an expert in helmets to feel and see the difference between the helmets from Wish and the helmets in our store. Although I must say that the knockoff helmets do resemble the real ones rather closely with some things, but will they offer similar, or any, head protection? There'll be more on that subject later. The first thing people usually do when they're checking out a new helmet is try on the helmet for size. Both the Arai and the AGV knockoffs have a very strong scent inside, and it's not new helmet smell, oh no, it's a strong glue smell. If you keep the helmet on for a while you start to feel lightheaded and you wonder why the helmet feels more like an extra large than a medium. AGV pistas don't even come in medium, they come in medium small and medium large. Ventilation wise both helmets have their downsides and, uh, well, no upsides really. You see, the fake Arai has vents that can't be closed at all. It even has flimsy vents in the visor that don't lead anywhere and damage the rubber seal. Unlike the real thing, of course, which has sturdy vents and very efficient ventilation channels. The Arai knockoff does have quite a few holes in the EPS inner shell, unlike our counterfeit AGV helmet. This one has no holes whatsoever in the inner shell, and that's a shame, because most of the vents do actually work, when they're not falling off. The visor of the AGV Pista fake is much thinner than the real one. The mechanism is weak and it's very stiff, so changing a visor is not as easy as it would be on the real AGV. The fake Arai visor is my personal favourite, as it comes loose nearly every time you move it. Imagine that happening on the motorway. Not cool. The real AGV Pista GPR has a mechanism that locks the visor into place when closed. The cheap knockoff just slams shut like a Tupperware tub. Both our real and fake Arai's feature a double D chin strap and a removable inner lining. Although when we take out the inner lining from the Arai from Wish, we see an inner shell that looks like polystyrene they'd use to pack a cheap CD player. The AGV is equally shocking, but on that one it appears that they have used two separate inner shells with a gap in between. If you hold the helmet in the light and look at it from the bottom, you can see the light coming down through the shell. Pretty scary stuff. Both our knockoffs have a sticker saying that they are ECE approved, but we couldn't find a tag with the country test number or serial number anywhere on either of them. By the way, the chin strap on the fake pista is a plastic ratchet instead of a double D system. The helmets definitely resemble their sources of inspiration, but do not be fooled by their appearance. The helmets feel weak and sound very hollow. I'm extremely curious to find out what will happen to these helmets in a crash test. We set up an appointment with the Arai test center in the Netherlands and they were generous enough to let us test the helmets with them. Now let's ride. We're traveling to uh, Arai's test center by car, not by bike, because we're a little bit worried that if we do have some kind of collision or crash that we may not be protected by the fake Arai or fake AGV helmets. So we're gonna go and test them at Arai's test center by real pros.
We arrived at Arai's test centre in the Netherlands and we're going to take a look at these three helmets on the test installation. Now there's one way you can check at home if these helmets would be real or fake and that is by standing on them. I know it may sound a bit silly but if we test it out you can see that when we stand on the Arai helmet nothing really happens. If we take the white Arai helmet which is probably not going to be real we can see it kind of bends and twists and turns and nearly falls apart. And the AGV over here is probably the worst of the two, which definitely has a way of bending. The first crash test is an official ECE test. We're going to drop the helmet in a free fall to simulate a crash at around 30 kilometers an hour. The metal skull has sensors inside which will measure the impact. The real RI helmet has a max peak of 188 Gs and a HIC value of 2068. The HIC, or Head Impact Criterion value, is calculated by multiplying the Gs and the impact time in milliseconds. In this case the RI helmet passes the ECE test with flying colours. The fake Arai helmet lands almost 100 Gs more than the real one. It exceeds the ECE limits of 275 Gs and a HIC value of 2400. The knockoff AGV helmet reaches similar Gs as the knockoff Arai and it stays under the HIC limit due to the shorter impact time. The helmet would not have passed the test regardless due to the amount of G's. Our second test is the penetration test, which simulates a foot peg, brake lever or other sharp object penetrating the helmet shell at around 30 km an hour. This is not liquid metal like Robert Patrick's T1000, these holes do not heal up. If the pole goes through the shell and hits the metal skull you will hear this noise. First up is the real Arai. Arai's outer shell takes damage but does not let the sharp object through. Let's try that again. Same result, as expected. Next up is the knockoff Arai. Imagine if that would have been your head. It went straight through. You can wow. see the, the inner shell has just come out and it's split all down the middle. <laughs> Supposed to save your life. I do wonder if the fake AGV will do any better. I'm afraid not. Straight through as well. There's that annoying tone again. And again, unsurprisingly. So the moral of the story is this. Do yourself a favour and get yourself a helmet from a licensed dealer such as Fortomoto.com and not from Wish or Alibaba. Because the helmets we ordered aren't actually genuine at all, even though they do say that they're Arai and AGV. After a bit of scratching I discovered that the AGV was actually a DGL or DQL, whatever it could be. And of course as we've seen in the test, they don't really handle themselves very well. Nothing like the real Arai of course, which didn't go through once, didn't crack and didn't exceed any crash test limits. 
Thank you for watching this video and thank you for helping me help you keep yourself safe. If you did enjoy watching the video, give us a thumbs up and what would be excellent is if you would like to subscribe to our channel because it helps us create new content and it gives you something to watch. So please go ahead and do that. Head over to fortomoto.com for the best prices and of course a massive collection of motorcycle helmets and motorcycle clothing. And if you order something from us, it will actually arrive, unlike the three out of five dodgy helmets from Wish. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Thank you.